Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and SUVs, the motorcycles, the pool, the camper, the dogs, the Talon, the, the Grom, hey, the Ford Explorer ST, if you're watching the channel, my predictions were right. We took this out yesterday and had a great breakfast, had a great day, and while the wife is right next to me in the passenger seat he's like wow i want to drive this car i'm like you can so she's already like hey i'm gonna switch it up i think i'm gonna start driving that i'm like you can so wow hey it's a beautiful monday morning here in the northern virginia dc maryland area i mean just incredibly beautiful not a cloud in the sky wow it just really is not too warm not too cold and as always good monday morning to those that subscribe and watch me gab away and yet another day in another week, as the year progresses and as we all progress together, wow. And what a fabulous weekend I had because Gail and Brian came over on Saturday about 1 o'clock. And wow, we just had such a great time. Uh, we just connected so well that we hung out for probably four and a half hours, close to five hours. We just couldn't stop talking. And it's so cool is we're all around the same age and we're all on the same page. And that's something, same age, same page. And it's such a great time. So uh, hope you're having a blessed morning there. And, and everybody else who subscribes to my channel as well as Don and Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Fisher and Bob out of Melbourne, Florida, and all those, the help desk, Vinny. Uh, I mean, I just go through the list of people that, you know, Darren, that always tune in and listen to me gab away, which is very nice of you to support me on my channel. And those that I didn't mention, Charles. And I mean, just sorry, maybe there, I didn't mention, it wasn't intentional, just me trying to go through my index of my brain I remember everybody that watches me on a regular basis, and there's a ton. So I really do appreciate it, and sorry if I didn't mention your name, but I'm thinking about all of you. And here's a desk. I made my little help desk yesterday, my little secretary desk. I don't know, why am I so fixated on that damn little thing? I mean, what is it about that little desk that I think is so cool? So now I better get the dogs into the upstairs office just so... Um, I'm not distracted from the dogs. And here comes Kiefer all charged up, but you're not going up there. Where's Ginger? Go ahead, Ginger. Yeah, we're not going to let you go up here because you will be getting my distraction. Oh, so it's lights, camera, action. And as always, <clears throat> what do I talk about? I, mean, I talk about so much stuff, too much stuff. But this little desk here, I got this at World Market. And I just thought that it was so cool. I bought it. <laughs> I mean, did I really need it? Um, Uh-oh. What's going on upstairs here? <laughs> uh, did I really need it? Not really. But I just had this gut instinct that um, I should get it. And it wasn't very expensive. And I just think it's such good quality. I just love the uh, the way you can, yeah, man. Is there something upstairs in the office I don't know about? But anyway, so I took a little how-to video on how to put this thing together. Very simple. Nothing radical. But look at that. little pull-out drawer, pull-out um, slide, little drawers, you know. And I just think it looks such good quality i think this is made in indonesia or something like that i thought it was uh china but it's not china actually but it's just really cool and if you had it in your house it could be a nice piece of furniture to set things on and hide things in if you wanted to i guess to degree so that was that and then if you really watch the channel you'll know that i got finally the hurleys out and i finally got my heat shields put on the cvo st right here and pulling the breakout i guess so excited pulling and touching that breakout that I jumped on that and I did a bunch of video content on the 360 camera but by the time I went riding yesterday it was probably like 4 30 I think it's 4 30 close to 5 o'clock and I ran up the road by the time I got back in it was about 7 and so I just had a hard time getting motivated to transfer all that video time on my breakout onto my phone which takes so much work and time I was like yeah I'll do it another day so you may see some videos populate of me being on the, the breakout and one video where I just about run over a, a groundhog. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I was so close to running over a big, a big ass groundhog. And on the video, you'll probably see it where it was just within seconds of me hitting this thing. How would that play out? I don't know. I was thinking, man, if I was going through a corner and had that bike, you know, going through a corner pretty quick and you hit a groundhog in the front wheel, would you freaking go down? Probably, but then it was crazy. But this is the thing. Once you start riding around in this area later in the evening, 
you really are susceptible to all the animals, the deer, the groundhogs, the possum, foxes. I mean, it starts growing, especially this time of year where the days are starting to get shorter and it gets uh, darker earlier. So riding a motorcycle up here, it gets more challenging in the later in the day to the evening or early morning because your odds are on these rural country roads, you're going to find the deer and all those other animals. And on a motorcycle, you hit those, that can be a life changer if you're not careful. So it's not most comforting. And I usually, I usually don't really ride late in the day just for that reason. But the breakout was so much fun. And if you're watching the channel, you'll know that uh, I commented how that seat, you know, what is wrong with Honda's seat? What is wrong? I mean, my good friend Chris, he has a Honda Goldwing. Same story. He had to get a whole new uh, seat for his Honda Goldwing, not the trike, but he has a uh, the black color or smoke metal or whatever you call it, um, Honda Goldwing. And he, he spent like $2,000 redoing the whole seating on his whole Goldwing for the for he and the passenger and the back rest as well. But it's really cool, but it's a lot of money. You know, it's $2,000. For me, I just have too many things, right? So I start spending $2,000 here, $2,000 there. I mean, it gets very, very expensive. So what is wrong with these manufacturers that make these motorcycles? And here's the thing. The word of the day is wrong. So I figured we'll start the week off with the word wrong. And how do we, we haven't used that word before. And how many will capitalize on that? Well, here you go. I'm here talking to you about how wrong these seats are in one of these motorcycles that when I ride them after a while, and if you're a motorcycle enthusiast and you've owned different motorcycles, you know after a while that seat can be so wrong to fit the seat of your pants. And I mean, and it's very challenging, especially on these adventure bikes. These adventure bikes, I haven't spent enough time at After Twin, this is a newer generation, but the previous generation, uh, after about an hour in, your tuchus was talking to you. In the wrong way, just as just you're in pain. The Triumph's not too bad. That seat there is pretty good. This is the other Honda. Yeah, once again, same seat. What's wrong with it? Everything. It's very uncomfortable. And using like that suede type of material, it's just it's just like it's an abrasion type of material on your pants. Uh, I haven't ridden the Fast Johnny enough to really know if that seat's gonna kind of wear me out. But it's so thin uh, for the kid. It's the same thing, very thin seat. For the Lowrider ST, the kid seems to be pretty content. I think that's probably the more comfortable bike long-term than this. I don't know yet. We just haven't ridden this enough because ever since Julia's gotten this motorcycle, a man named Brian has come into her life and a boyfriend. And on the weekends, they spend a lot of time together and they spend time with his family. And yesterday, they went hiking. Julia claims they hiked maybe... 14 miles. I don't know how she came to that number, but they went hiking and she was gone all day. So if you watch my videos, my channel, you don't see my daughter, Julia, as much in, in these videos, especially in motorcycle riding. She's just kind of disappeared from the motorcycle riding because um, her boyfriend doesn't know, how, doesn't know how to ride a motorcycle street legal per se. And he doesn't have a license and I'm not there to put him that type of exposure. Can he ride around on the Honda Grom or Honda Monkey on my property and around the street here, he can't. But for him to be going out, there's no way. He's not there. You know, he's never ridden motorcycles. <laughs> you just don't put somebody in a situation where they're uh, going to be exposed to the, you know, the experience you have to have. You know, what is wrong with you? And that's a challenge for you as a parent or anybody. You know, what is wrong with you? You're going to put a, a person on a motorcycle that barely has driven one? No, you don't do that. So what's wrong with the, uh, the motorcycles here. And that's what always goes on in my life and world. I buy so many damn things that initial, you know, the initial fun factor begins to wear off. And then that's what goes wrong with my passion and love, whatever I buy. And eventually I want something different. And I always thought for years by owning lots of things all at one time, that would kind of dissipate, but it hasn't. <laughs> it's still an ongoing, very ongoing challenge. Now, something yesterday I showed you on my channel, get some coffee here, looking at the, the uh, Harley-Davidson CVOST is, and one of the subscribers yesterday heard my video about how I think a lot of my subscribers have come to my channel based off of motorcycles. And I'm sorry, I can't remember your username, so my apologies if you're listening to me this morning, because there's lots of usernames out there. Um, and you know what, Buck, I feel so bad for Buck. 
<laughs> out of Oregon. I have totally forgot to put a freaking sticker in the mail to you. I just can't believe I forgot all about that. I've been so busy. So my sincere apologies. And I talked about Buck every day of the week last week with his muscular dystrophy challenges, um, his LGMD, and, and to donate to that organization, to foundation to help him and others. And so, you know, once again, it's like, wow, I can't believe I forgot that. I'm just always going 100 miles an hour doing things, going places. So you will get a sticker hopefully by the end of the week. Albert in California took forever to get his sticker. I was blown away that I mailed that thing. It was like a week later before he got it, but whatever. So if you're watching the channel, what was wrong with Harley Davidson not putting these heat shields um, on these motors? And if you watch that video, you'll see how there's just a, a dead pocket. But here, back to one subscriber, um, what drew him to my channel was the low, it was the, not the low rider, but the uh, Harley Davidson Road Glide CVOST. He point blank came to my channel and watches my channel because of that motorcycle. That drew him in, which that's really cool to hear somebody tell you about that. But if you watch the channel, you'll see that most of these touring motorcycles come with these engine heat shields that radiate the uh, heat away from you, or as they protect the heat away from you. Now, Mr. Sanchez claims that the that the reason they aren't there is because it gives the engine more airflow. And he was saying that you put like one on the right side or left side, and it deflects the air through there and makes it more efficient to cool it. So you only have like one. I don't know much all about that. So which is interesting to hear him say that that by having these engine guards, engine heat shields on the engine area here, this was deliberately not done because the um, heating, the heat off that engine. Um, won't be as efficient now because I created that. I don't know. But that's what Mr. Sanchez commented about, which can make sense to me that it would seem like that. That could possibly be. But I don't think it's going to be a big problem. But we'll find out as time progresses. And that's always the thing. Do you put something together the wrong way? Who hasn't done that? Does the person at the manufacturing put together something wrong? Who hasn't had that problem? Do they ship you the wrong part? Or did you order the wrong part? I mean, you can go through a list of all the things that go wrong in our life. And that's a challenge for us is how we overcome the things that are wrong. I mean, are you happy when you do something wrong? I would say most people in their life are not happy when you've done something wrong. And more challenge is when you know that you've done something wrong, will you apologize or correct it and make it right? Or we could just continue to argue and not want to accept that you screwed up and you're in the wrong. I mean, that's a big, big problem in today's society. Always has been. It's nothing really new in mankind. We, mankind operates, but more than ever, I think we can all agree that we have so much information thrown at us all the time. And that's the challenge. You get, you get the so-called misinformation. You get the warning on my channel, this may contain misinformation. So they're warning you. Of a, apparently, I've never seen it, but other of my subscribers have said every now and then a little warning sign comes up and is informing you that this guy is wrong on what he is telling you. Which it could be. I'm not going to be here to tell you that everything I tell you is 100% correct. I'm just reading content and then just sharing content with you. And maybe I misread the content. That does happen. In fact, uh, when Gail and Brian came over and spent the day with us Saturday afternoon, we had such a great time. Um, I, I reached out to him, and I was like, we should get together and go see Julia's horse, Prancer, uh, for, you know, like noon or so, 1 o'clock, and then we can go and have a great barbecue uh, lunch later. And and so it was really crazy. This was Saturday evening, and they and Gail res responded, and, and so I didn't read that text correctly. I was telling, um, I think I was telling everybody we're going to go for lunch and blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, Julie's like, or that evening, Julie's like, no, they want to go next Saturday, not tomorrow. So initially, I was thinking that Sunday, we were going to get together and go see the horse and then go have lunch in the afternoon. And Julia read the text better than I did. And she's like, no, Dad, this is next Saturday, not tomorrow. I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm already texting my wife. Hey, you know, we're going to go see the horse and get lunch this tomorrow afternoon for and get together and have some fun. It's beautiful weather. No, I was wrong. And then this is classic. Last evening, uh, later last evening, I texted what I thought was Gail. So Brian now 
you since Ryan has met me and knows who I am, he has now, you know, shared his personal phone number and text where we can text each other. And now I'm texting um, Gail's husband, Brian, while I'm thinking I'm texting her. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, that, that was classic. And Brian is all of a sudden like, what? What are you talking about? It was classic of what was going on. And so, so I was wrong. I, you know, who hasn't done that? Who hasn't texted somebody the wrong information? Oh my gosh, is that embarrassing? Who hasn't texted somebody? And I mean, that can get pretty heavy and deep. Who hasn't called somebody by accident and then you're talking about that person? Who? Everybody's heard these stories on how dangerous the technology we have around us that can call you out for being so wrong. Meaning now you're sharing information that was supposed to be just with that person that may you're talking about the other person that you just texted or you called. Yeah, I guarantee you, everyone here on my channel can share a story of themselves or somebody did it to them or they know a friend that texted the wrong person or text or, or called the wrong number or their phone called somebody by accident. Who hasn't had that happen? They call it the butt call. That's what they called it years ago. Uh, so, I mean, and then who hasn't gotten the wrong email? Or you've sent the wrong email to the wrong person. Oh, my gosh. It doesn't, doesn't end. Or you're out in the parking lot. I mean, I can guarantee you everybody at some point has maybe done this. You're out in the parking lot, and you think you're walking up to your car, and you're at the wrong car. Um, or I think Julie, years ago, um, was getting ready to get into somebody else's car that pulled up in the shopping center to pick her up. And at the last second, I think she realized it wasn't, uh, me and my car was somebody else's car. I mean, and, I, and that there is kind of, I think that happened. She'd probably clarify it more. Now, Mac and Cheese, he did the exhaust wrong on my Ford Mustang. It's driving me nuts. I really need to drive this thing up to his, his shop and have him fix that left um, rear exhaust. It's wrong. It's not, it's, we did it wrong. The both of us did it wrong. Yeah, I'm in trouble in that Mustang for doing wrong, of going down the road, of having fun driving down the road. This is classic. So, Gail and Brian are over here hanging out, and Gail even made a really nice video showing her making that Mexican casserole, which casserole, which was tr truly just delicious. We just gobbled it up, and her and uh, st her and my wife. Oops, I'm going to slip the word here, and like she, she did, her her and my wife were out front here hanging out, talking, and the front porch there with Julia, and they're all having a, gr a great time, and and they're and, and Brian and I are in the shop. You're talking motorcycles, and it's so cool because Brian, he said, "What do you think of this Roguelide CVST?" Because he test drove one, and I said, "I think this is the baddest ass production Harley that's ever been made." I think that right out of the gate, for you not modding anything, it's the baddest ass, and I call it the muscle bike. And he's like, "Wow, I really am glad to hear that because I uh, I thought it was one of the I thought the same thing." And I was like, okay, well, that's awesome. So he's like, yes, he rode this motorcycle, and he walked away thinking this is one of the nicest Harley Davidsons he's ever ridden. And so it was a great conversation. Meanwhile, I don't always disclose to my wife every single thing that happens in my life because i got to figure out how to handle it, and so it doesn't just stress her out about hearing me getting myself in trouble with a speeding ticket. And, and that just gets on the wife's you know concern list, which I don't blame her. And, and so I didn't bring it up. I usually probably bring that up once I've beat the ticket. Oh, hey, honey, I got a ticket, but I went through the, the lawyer and we went through the proper steps and procedures. And fortunately, the, the ticket wasn't as bad as it could have been. And I got things resolved. And then that's a better conversation. Well, I'm going to Gail. She didn't know that. She doesn't know the relationship with my wife and I and how I kind of handle things and things are shared or not. Sure, as can all relate with that. But anyways, Gail's out there in front talking away. And she talks about my ticket. And my wife's like, ticket? And so my wife yesterday, we brought this up, going to uh, breakfast yesterday morning with the wife. And, and she's like, oh, yeah, Gail. Gail was like instantly, how about those Mets? <laughs> and then Gail, she, I think, you know, I, I know. She probably feel like, oh, gosh, this isn't good. But we all do that. We all we say something at the wrong time, at the wrong moment. Who hasn't done that? I mean, that's a, a big challenge. So for Gail out there, listen to my channel, my wife, there's nothing going on. We're, she's like, oh my gosh, what'd you do? So there's nothing bad going on. So I hope that Gail and Brian that watch my YouTube channel understand that was, we had a blast and we're gonna get together again and we're gonna ride some motorcycles as well. And I think Brian's gonna come over and ride some motorcycles um, with me 
as well. So that's a little bit more information that I'll disclose down the road. And we'll talk about that. And we'll have videos. It would be pretty cool to share that that get together. So so yeah, the wrong. We all we all get in the wrong, and we say the wrong things to somebody. If you're in a relationship, unfortunately, you'll get into a dispute or something, and we'll say th something wrong that offends you. And then you know sometimes these are the things that men and women. Um, in business, we all go through in life, and sadly, there's things sometimes that you say wrong that will never ever be forgotten. And who, I mean, who doesn't know these stories? But you think about in our adventures to buying our cars and motorcycles and the campers, and yeah, and, and uh, Gail and Brian, they're big time campers. They've owned a lot of campers over the years, they don't have one right now. And so, for us, where does it go wrong? And the um, well, so to give you an example. This is really intriguing about Gail and Brian. I don't talk a lot about them, but it is for me to share with you and how things kind of play out that are kind of just just weird sometimes, but then it's it's interesting and how I went out to Timber Honda to get some parts. You know, I don't think it's buying a motorcycle. And unbeknownst to me, Gail and Brian were in the dealership, but I saw them on the back side of them kind of walking through the dealership talking to Jack, Jack of all trades there at Timber Honda, and I didn't really know what was going on. So I didn't really know they were there to buy. I, I figured they were negotiating something, but I, I didn't know them. And so we do our thing, and, and then eventually they actually just leave. They're gone. And then I find out from Jack that they were right on the page of buying this motorcycle, apparently, and I could be wrong a little bit on this, but apparently they were negotiating a deal on the DCT, that was being built at the time, and they negotiated a deal, but then they couldn't come to agreement. And what really happened was, I think they were told the wrong finance rate, which Jack feels terrible about. But from my understanding, since I'm so close with Bill, the judge there, and others in that dealership, um, my understanding is they were, Jack told them one rate, but then Bill said, no, it's this rate. And I think that they just felt like, well, that's wrong. And I think that's what kind of killed the deal. And for Gail and Brian to watch my channel, you can clarify that if you want to get that much detail on my channel. You don't really have to. But, but once again, what went wrong? What went wrong is that they had a presentation. And who doesn't have this happen? I mean, I can guarantee everybody on this channel that watches my channel can all relate with the exact same experience. That you were told one thing, but in the end, then you're told it was wrong. And, and, and it just grounds you so much that you just walk. And it's a big problem in all types of business, not just cars and motorcycles uh, and relationships and schooling. I mean, it goes, it's, it's infinite on how you're told something only to find out later that there was the wrong information. Who hasn't, who hasn't heard this? And so, once again, keeping it to the cars and trucks and motorcycles, um, what is wrong with all the Ford Broncos right now? Really, Roger or not, Ford is um, recalling a lot of its engines in these Ford Broncos. And, which, and the reason I'm bringing this up is back in 2020, this is during um, the summer, I think it's 2021. Summer 2021, I got two orders for two Broncos. And I put them in. And it wasn't until, um, I believe, it was, I'm trying to remember all the dates. So I guess it was the summer of 2020. Was, yeah. Because the pandemic would just really shut down the company. And it was like July of 2020, I put two orders in for these Broncos. And, and then it wasn't until um, the fall of 2021 that I really got notices that these Broncos would become available. And it wasn't until January 2022, I received my Hot Pepper Red um, uh, first Bronco Wild Track um, package that's what i call it I can't, can't keep track of all these different names so so it took quite a while to get it but on the bronco forum i was very concerned because lots of people were getting them earlier than i got mine and so really i think like 2021 i think people like in september october november december were getting their broncos may have even been august possibly and on the forum, he started reading about people having catastrophic engine failure. So I was posting in that forum after seeing many, I mean, lots. So just the initial run of the first run of the Broncos on the 2.7 motor, 2.7 liter motors, they were, I think that was a new design motor, um, if I remember right. I think the 2.7, which that was the V6 twin turbo versus the 2.3 uh, four-cylinder 
that was available, but I got the more powerful V6 twin turbo. And so many people on the forum started sharing all these people getting these having catastrophic engine failure. And we didn't know what was going on. Well, eventually they came to find out that the valve seal and the upper valve train, the valve seal and one of the valves would, would break or the retainer clip, the retainer clip would like break or something and the valve would drop in down to the cylinder and then you had a catastrophic engine failure. And a lot of people started having this problem. And so it became a big concern. I even put out on the forum, do I even take the, 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 the Bronco? And many were like, yeah, you know, and then many were like, yeah, you know, just take it. Because most of the people's concern was, sadly, people are getting these brand new Broncos during the pandemic. And if your engine blew up, you may be two, three months or longer to get that repaired because of the pandemic. So it was a big problem. And, but I was blessed and I never had that problem for the amount of time I had both of my Broncos. So I had a two-door and I had the four-door. Four-door I had put a lot of miles on, two-door I did not, but I never had any issues. Well now Ford, finally, think about this. You're going from the fall of 2021 to 2024. Finally, Ford has made a major recall of like 97,000 of those 2.7 liter motors. And, and even to the point that this Bronco out here is probably part of that recall, which is hard to believe. But this Bronco right here, we have like 11 or 12,000 miles on it, maybe part of our recall because of Ford designed those intake valves or exhaust valves or whatever, the upper valve train. Uh, they, they, they built it wrong. They didn't use the right parts or they used cheap parts that created that problem. So the whole point of that is Ford has got a big problem. But look at Toyota. It's amazing how Toyota, you know, I haven't really heard a lot, but my understanding right now is Toyota's V8 motors in those trucks are, I think it's the V8 or is it the V6? See, I'm not even real clear on that because I'm not a Toyota guy. I'm just not really following it. But apparently these Toyota trucks and even the Lexus vehicles, they're getting major recalls of engine, catastrophic engine fit to the point that I think some people um, try to trade in their, their Toyota Tundra truck and the dealership doesn't even want it. Now, is it the V8 motor or the V6? Somebody else out there will know better than me, but it's, it's a big problem because a dealership is very concerned that they buy that truck from you and then it blows up on their parking lot. How long is it going to take for it to get fixed? So I think a lot of people could reach out to their Toyota 100 people, and it's not me ragging on Toyota. It's just me sharing with you that they've got a big wrong problem. Everybody knows in the automotive industry, Motorcycle industry, um, Harley just settled apparently a big lawsuit because of the trike rear suspension control system or whatever it is and technology um, isn't what they said to everybody. And they've had major problems and to the point that they get a class action lawsuit, I believe. But once again, this is where I could be wrong. And so you can be like, yeah, Mr. Iceman, you're telling people the wrong information. And that's very challenging for me as a YouTube creator. Um... That, that, you know, that is challenging because it's you, me bringing content to you and then do I really present the information where you've learned something or you've been told something wrong? And who doesn't feel more than ever in today's social media, the media machine? You look at so many things that you learn and hear about, but you know in so many ways you feel like it's wrong of what they're telling you. Um, I mean, it's just, it, you're, and that's something that's I think irritates a lot of people is you go into a dealership and you're persuaded to think something that's just wrong. It isn't really what it is. And you know, as well as I do, if you really watch my channel, how wrong was Ford with that Ford Power Boost that was telling me that I'm going to get 23 miles per gallon. And I was so excited about that that I traded my black 2000, what was it, a 23 or 22 Ford Black Raptor, a beautiful truck that I bought with barely any miles on it used. And I was just growing up to 14 miles per gallon I was getting out of it. And I saw, after I drove that power boost, I felt it was about it was every bit as powerful as that Raptor truck. And I came to closure, 23 miles per gallon, all the way around, I'm going to buy that. And I traded it. And for, to no avail, I could never get 23 miles a gallon. And so, in my eyes, Ford was wrong, was wrong in presenting that vehicle for the EPA standards. And that's where, that's where the, the automotive industry is in a challenge because of the green agenda, the EPA, and if you don't play the game right as a manufacturer, you're going to have millions of dollars in EPA fines. And that's what's so interesting is how, as these car manufacturers have evolved into the Elon Musk world, the Tesla 
total electric vehicle, somebody, I think, forget that Elon Musk has reaped rewards from all these manufacturers throughout the whole world of not meeting the correct guidelines for the carbon foot carbon footprint that they create out of making cars and trucks and SUVs and more so cars more more so cars and uh, the more compliant EPA guideline ratings heavy duty trucks can kind of get a a uh, they don't they don't follow under the same guidelines but the point is these manufacturers have been so wrong about their carbon footprint in what the EPA of the world, the green agenda of the world, wants them to be, they have had to buy carbon footprint tax credits from Tesla, where Tesla has made, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, probably over the last 10 years, probably over a billion dollars or more of monies that these companies like Christ, like FCA, which was used to be Fiat, Chrysler Automotive Group, General Motors, Mercedes, BMW. I mean, you can go through the list of all the big guys in the industry, Toyota, they would buy Elon Musk carbon footprint tax credits to offset the penalties that they would be given by the, the governing bodies of their country um, for not complying to their um, the stringent guidelines. And that's where we all, it's the same old conversation on my channel. It's the EV age versus the ice age, or I should say the ice age versus the EV age, though so many feel like this EV age is so wrong. I guarantee you, majority of people on my channel will tell you that they think this green agenda is more of a control of the future of the world, of mankind, and transportation. It's more about that than the real true rewards that come from the real green agenda activism that is so, in so many ways, so wrong on how they are pushing and forcing mankind to adapt to a whole new way of transportation and a whole new way of renewable energies and and i think most will agree that it's wrong on how they have billions of dollars and they're manhandling corporations and businesses that are forced to play their game or they're run out of business and i think many see that but the thing is now many of these companies are raising their hand like jim farley of the ford and and saying that how wrong he was to believe that everybody and their brother would be jumping on board to buy an electric vehicle, and now they're kind of pushing things and delaying things in that that aspect and going more to the hydrogen, or I should say the more the hybrid, not even the hydrogen, Kawasaki, I think, just made a hydrogen motorcycle. But the point is, they're going now to the hybrid, the gas engine electric uh, setup that um, work together to make it a more efficient blend of the technology and a more confident uh, confidence for people to buy vehicles. Hey, no, no, come here, Keith. The wife's leaving. And uh, come here, Keith. Come on, back in here. And so I think that most manufacturers, especially Toyota, Toyota, one of their biggest selling products are the hybrid vehicles. And that's what happens. So you hear from these, hey, come here, Bob. The auto dealerships that are face-to-face -face with the consumers, what you hear from them is the people come into the showroom and are more intrigued and interested in buying a hybrid vehicle over an electric vehicle. They have more confidence that long-term, that vehicle will be more reliable, they can go more places, and it'll have a better value. Because how wrong was I? I mean, I bought these electric vehicles. Uh, not, I never thought that they would just be obliterated, where if you spent $100,000, this truck's now worth $40,000. I never dreamed that. I mean, you know as well as I do, when you buy a Highline car for $100,000, you're probably going to get 70 to 80 grand for it at the end of the day. You'd maybe get 80 on your own. Trading it, you're probably at 70. It's going to be a huge hit. But I never would have dreamed a $100,000 truck would be worth in the $40,000 range. And then the dealership, for the most part, didn't even want it. But in some ways, they would want it because they got it so cheap, they'd know somebody buy it for very inexpensive. What's the risk then? And that's the thing. If you're smart in life, you buy the, you, the Iceman's used vehicles because they're barely used. Because of my wrong decisions of buying way too many things, and then I don't drive them enough, and then at some point, my flair and love of the vehicle starts to dissipate, and then I come to closure and just get rid of it. And so the next guy that comes along, he'll get a very nice used uh, motorcycle, car, SUV that the Iceman owned, and he'll save them, he or she will save themselves thousands and thousands of dollars because the. Uh, as you know, all these things depreciate in value. So me some water here. Now, yesterday, it was the big football day. And, you know, what is going on? What is wrong 
what is wrong with me? Because I just don't get excited about watching football. I really don't. What has happened? So many years ago, I would look forward to the football season coming to be, and I really looked forward to that time of year, and I enjoyed typically this late Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening of watching football. I don't get that enjoyment anymore. Um, what is wrong with me? I don't get enjoyment of watching the NBA professional basketball anymore. I don't watch it. Um, I don't get I mean, I get enjoy, more enjoyment watching the um, baseball when it comes down to the, uh, the run for the playoffs in the World Series. I get more enjoyment now than I never would have got when I was younger. And why is that? And I don't really watch hockey anymore. But what is wrong with me? Well, I think many here can relate with me that what's wrong is that the political system of our country and the agendas of our country uh, use and abuse the, uh, the sports and the entertainment industry to further advance their agendas. And then you had um, all these personalities like LeBron James, Stephen Curry, um, Steve Kerr, the coach, that all start mouthing off their political views and, and attitudes. And, and I think it just irks the hell out of people like it does me, which I think is so wrong. I didn't turn on baseball, basketball, football, hockey, any of those to hear these people uh, tell me the way I have to live and the way things are. I turned it on to escape that. And that's what I think sometimes irritates people on my channel is, which I hear like Dan, Dan out there in Canada, more than Dan, he's like saying, hey man, you know, you're making a lot of doom and gloom videos. So I'm thinking, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I make a lot of fun videos too. And I mentioned this yesterday. But I think that what happens to my channel sometimes, people just don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the, the, the rhetoric of me sitting here talking about, um, you know, what's going on in the world. And, oh, just by the way, so YouTube finally reached out on the monies that um, I have, the monies that they're holding. And it's very interesting because it gets very personal, but there's, they're not holding my monies back for my content. That's not going on. It's something else that's more a personal level of a dispute. I'm, I'm right now and I'm in a legal dispute with two companies and they apparently have done something to freeze my account. So I'm not telling my lawyer to look into this, but if you're a business owner like I am and you're exposed like I am of monies and finances, it's very challenging. And so the good news is YouTube is not um, holding my monetization, monetization, my money's being earned because of my content. That's not what's going on. It's more a legal dispute between some people, some companies that I am going back and forth with, and it's always about the money, and apparently that somehow this is what's so crazy. They've gotten a UC ceiling on one of my companies that has nothing to do with this YouTube channel. So I'm not telling my lawyer reach out. It's like, how, how can this legal dispute be between this guy, Ice Age, that has nothing to do with the legal dispute of a company you owns that's a dispute about monies. Wow. What is that all about? Eh, it's, it just doesn't end. Yeah, if you don't think that I have stress in my life, if you don't think that I've made wrong decisions, I mean, I'll be the first to raise my hand. Yes, absolutely. Have I made wrong decisions? Probably more than I ever thought I could make wrong decisions. And you're looking at all of them because it's an incredible, incredible financial drain for me to continue to try to make this all work and with getting noticed out of the Florida, the insurance has gone through the roof. Now my motorcycle insurance is, is, is going to be raised. I mean, so that, you know, when, when, does the, when does the rollback, guys, begin to show up? It may be sooner than later than you realize. So all those, and how embarrassing is that? Extremely embarrassing because for my own predictions of where I would be, and Gail is such a great lady because she was showing my channel, that, you know, YouTube does push your channel more than you maybe realize. I still have my own theories conspiracy theories and how these other YouTubers make so much freaking money off of the same damn thing every day of walking around and they're looking at your, you're looking at your face, these guys that make a ton of money and they're just talking about the dire straits of the economy and how everything's going to the ground and how you better sell your stock, you better sell your house, you better sell your cars, blah, 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 blah. And they make, they get 80, 90, 100,000 plus views, 150,000 views, just running their mouth with you looking at them. I've talked about it a zillion times. So, so for me, yeah, have I made some wrong decisions? Yeah, I think I have. Will you be part of the channel to witness it? You know, some say your channel will probably explode if you actually then started sharing with the dire straits you put yourself in because of your wrong financial decisions. Now, my wife, she is very, very, uh, this, this, this draws my wife's nerves. So even the point, she's like, you need to take that video down because 
It's just, I don't want people, it's embarrassing. I don't want to talk about this. Like, well, you know, it could go both ways. I don't, I wouldn't be here to write it off and give up. I don't just give up in life. But at the same time, I truly, I was telling uh, Gail that four and a half years ago when I started my channel, she was like, wow, you've been doing this four and a half years? And for her, she hasn't been doing it very long. She, her channel's already growing. And I think she could even grow a lot more um, if she kind of changed some things on it because she just really has a great personality. She sings. She sings like you can't believe. She sent me a video of her singing. I was like, wow, you, you took the wrong path in life. You should have been a singer. She can sing. She has a beautiful voice. So, um, you know, the point is, you know, what, what plays out for me and how, the wrong decisions I made. And that's what I was telling Gail. I was like, I really thought four years in, I'd be making a good two, three thousand dollars a month or more for all my efforts and work and the way my, my growth of my channel was. But no, I mean, I'm making about an average of three hundred dollars a month, which I'm sure some people would be stumped that here's a guy that posts two, three, four, five videos a day and spends hours and hours and I bring you content and I bring you fun and but yet to no avail. I know Charles and others will reach out and say, you really need to reach out and get these advertisers to pay you, which I think that's a great idea. I really should do that, like the muck off. And so here's the muck off right here, which I would love to show that product for that company and, and get rewarded for having that on my channel. This is a great product to recommend to clean your motorcycle, car, whatever. But also, I saw my wife yesterday, maybe the thing I'm doing wrong, doing wrong is I shouldn't talk about the challenges of what I have, but I should talk about how successful I am and how much money I'm making. But I think, but that's, you know, okay, so if in, in real life, my real business, I make a good amount of money to be able to afford all this. YouTube, not so much. And I saw my wife, that's probably where I make a big mistake on my channel. And But it's then, it's just the, the, the con game. I just start telling people, oh, I'm making so much money on YouTube. This, and many people think that. Many people that tune into my channel, they think that the YouTube monies pay for all this stuff. They think that I'm most likely just making a fortune off of YouTube. And I was telling the wife, it's probably, I should be saying that, but then it's not truthful. And that just isn't who I am. You know, I think that's wrong. But I think that many people do that. Who doesn't know the MLM, the network marketing, the sales pitch, the dealerships? They start telling you things that are so wrong to entice you to try to do something, but in the end, you fail. Because it was, always, it was the wrong message and the wrong way of being taught how to make money. But at the same time, I get it. I could really be telling people, and you know as well as I do, people would buy in that I'm making a ton of money off of YouTube, and then that changes the whole vision, the whole way you view me, that this guy is creating an incredible YouTube channel, and he's making a ton of money. And we got to watch this guy. So I think, wow, yeah. So was I wrong to kind of disclose the negativity on it? Probably. And I'm probably that's probably a big wrong thing to do. I should probably be on the other page on the upbeat, like Dan said, let's have the upbeat conversations. Right, I agree. That's it. I talk all day. Ask Gail and Brian. I talk all day long. They could have been here all night long. It would have been it'd have been like, let us go. Let us go. So as always, where'd Don go, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's all gone. Yeah, the beer cans were left. I see that. But anyways, yeah, we'll have more adventures with Don another day. We'll track him down. So anyways that's it. Appreciate you watching my channel. It's long. I get it. God bless. Have a great day.